Have you ever heard of U-235 isotope, or as it's known outside the weapons industry as depleted uranium, or DU? DU is a byproduct of waste from nuclear reactors and the production of nuclear weapons. And since 1977, the U.S. has been using this material to coat artillery shells, missiles, and even tanks. So why is depleted uranium so prevalent in military use? Well, the material is extremely dense and strong, which makes it perfect to penetrate reinforced steel armor and bust through buildings. And despite internationally undisputed health effects that have already led to 155 countries voting in favor of limiting its use, the U.S. still has a stockpile of it and has been using DU in conventional warfare for decades. So how exactly does DU work, and why is it such a controversial method of warfare? Well, when a missile or artillery shell is coated in DU and shot at a target, it ignites, exploding into thousands of radioactive microparticles. These particles are then scattered, often carried by the wind or seeping into the ground, affecting the water and food consumed by millions of people. Believe it or not, no country in the world has experienced more devastation from the practice of depleted uranium than that of Iraq. Since 2003, it's estimated that 1,000 to 2,000 metric tons of DU has been fired during the war. But the U.S. has been using DU against the country since the first Gulf War, the effects of which have physically manifested into widespread birth defects. In fact, the birth defects are so rampant, Al Jazeera recently reported that the rate of childhood deformities in Fallujah has now surpassed that of Hiroshima and Nagasaki after the dropping of two atomic bombs. And according to Dr. Samir Alani, the only physician in Fallujah keeping a record of these defects, the rate of abnormalities is alarming, the numbers far surpassing anywhere in the rest of the world. Some of the malformations being recorded in Fallujah include facial clefting, nervous system and skeletal disorders, immune system problems, and heart deficiencies. But these illnesses are not isolated to newborn babies. There are now growing reports of cancer, especially among children, believed to be caused by DU contamination. And that's not the only toxic material causing effects in the country. The military utilized mercury, lead, and even phosphorus bombs. Ironically, white phosphorus was the same chemical that Saddam Hussein used against the Kurds in 91, which, of course, the U.S. cited as part of its WMD arsenal and thus a justification for the Iraqi invasion. That, my friends, is what you call circular logic. And somehow, the U.S. does not define DU, lead, or mercury as hazardous. Well, despite the government denying the obvious, the evidence is undisputable. Multiple studies show the same correlation between contamination from munitions and the epidemic of congenital birth defects in southern Iraq. But the most disturbing part of all is that once it's used, the radioactivity never goes away. It will plague one generation after the next for millions of years. Look, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do to stop these devastating health effects from playing out, but I'll tell you what we can do. We can demand that this practice be banned and insist on holding those responsible accountable.